On the Monday after uh, Martin Luther King's celebration, Tuesday, I had a, a young student come to my office and he said, Father Jack, I just want to let you know I really enjoyed the Martin Luther King speaker. And I was out of town, so I said, well, I didn't actually hear him myself, but I heard that he was very good, and I appreciate you coming and telling me. And then he kind of stood around and shuffled his feet a little bit, and I said, is there something more you want to say? And he said, well, I would like to speak to our school community one day. And I said, and what would we speak about? So he told me what he wanted to talk about, and I said, or thought to myself, because of your truth, because of who you are as a person, because of what's happening in our country, in our world, I think have the perfect place. And so I've invited him to speak before Archbishop Tobin in our community today. So I'd like to invite our student speaker, Umir Sheikh. Good morning, everyone. My name is Umer Sheikh, and I am a junior from the Burbuff class of 2017. I want to start out by thanking everyone who granted me the privilege to stand up here and share my thoughts with you all. Thank you very much to Archbishop Tobin and the entirety of the Jesuit family for spending Mass here with us today. Thank you, Father Jack and Mr. Van Slambook, for granting me the wonderful opportunity to stand up here and share my thoughts with you all. And lastly, but most certainly not least, Thank you, my fellow classmates and faculty, for lending me your ear for the time we have. Today is a very special day, for a religious purpose, most certainly. But just as importantly, it is one of the few times throughout the school year where we are all gathered in one place to listen, reflect, and experience the power of the bonds that we all share with one another. Now, I'm sure that I'm not the first person to have told you this. But I repeat it to you because of the profound truth that lies behind it. The bonds that we have here as a Burbuff, as a school, but even more so as a family, are bonds quite unlike any other. They're bonds of kinship, belonging, acceptance, and love. My experience in high school has been full of many interesting twists and turns. And the bonds that I formed here are quite honestly the bonds that I least expected to form. But I'm proud to say that the one thing that has always remained constant in my Burbuff experience is the strength of the bonds that I so deeply cherish with each and every one of my classmates. For those of you who do not know, I came to Burbuff from a public school of rather notable size, accompanied by an equally proportional amount of mischief, unawareness, and unwillingness. Which would, which would prove to be an issue, for, which would prove to be an issue for a darker-skinned Muslim boy such as myself. Standing here today, I can recall several events from my sixth-grade humanities class, but there was one event in particular that still strongly resonates with me. It was an early May morning in 2011, and every Friday, my teacher would go on this website called Flocabulary, where the creators put all of the world's major events from that week into a rap song so that all the kids would be more apt and more inclined to learning about it. The particular one we listened to that day mentioned how Osama bin Laden had just been found and killed. And just as the video got to the line, I can recall a girl at the table sitting across from me, leaning over and whispering to her friend that the Muslims had gotten what they deserved, and that the Muslims tried to kill our leader, so in turn, we killed the Muslims' leader. Now, even the very notion that someone would think someone such as Osama bin Laden was the leader of the Muslims was heartbreaking enough. But I was more upset as to why this person thought what she did. And me being the naive 11-year-old I was, I started to wonder if I had done anything to make her think this. And if I had done anything to damage the bond that she had with her understanding of all faith. So I reasoned it would simply be best to not talk about it or not even mention it at all for my mention of my faith never seemed to bring about any positive change. This resolve of mine was rather short-lived, as in the seventh grade, my teacher asked me for a huge honor to teach with the class Arabic and about the faith of Islam. However, I quickly realized that perhaps teaching about my faith would clear up misconceptions. So I thanked my teacher, shoved my reluctance aside, and accepted. I soon began teaching Arabic and Islamic history to the class, 
But for the most part, my classmates absolutely loved it. They really got into learning a language with an entirely different alphabet and a history completely different from the one they had known their entire lives. However, there were two kids in my class who just didn't quite get the concept of what I was trying to teach them. And no matter how much I tried to help, I always emerged unsuccessful in my attempts. One day after school, they came up to me and started complaining about how they were forced to learn a language that no one spoke and no one cared about. Now, I told them that this was a part of the class. And it was a fun learning experience that had been passed down in Islamic families for generations. And if they wanted to understand the faith, Arabic was one of the keystones. This did not go over very well with them. Moments later, I quickly realized that I had been kicked into a locker and punched right in the gut. And I heard them mutter to me, why would we ever want to learn how to blow stuff up? That stuff is for dirtbags like you. Wondering what I had ever done in my entire life to, to deserve such hatred for just being myself, I left the school that day sobbing. And when my incredibly caring and loving mother asked me if I had been crying, I responded with a simple no. Then for me came an opportunity. Uh, when deciding when to go for high school, my parents and I found the school known as Burbuff. Now we knew it was a private Catholic school with under 1,000 students and thought this environment would be optimal for me to pursue my goals. What kept circulating in my mind was what had happened to me over my middle school experience. And I dreaded even considering what would happen if I were to come with my beliefs to a Catholic school. If I was beaten and insulted in public school, how much worse would a Catholic school be? Unbeknownst to me, all these times, these times of distortion, personal struggle, they changed into these evolving ideals. And eventually, they turned into dreams. And it's when your dreams have turned to you that you know that you have lived a truly fulfilling life. For me, that dream was Brebuff. My classmates in the junior class don't need a reminder of what I was like my freshman year. Just because, just because I had left my middle school doesn't mean the pain I felt there did. I masked all the pain and hurt I felt by taking it out on others, breaking the most important bonds of my life before I could ever even truly form them. The event truly changed me, and what happened in particular came second semester in Mr. Spots' religion course. It was the first day of class and Mr. Spots had asked us to go around in a circle. And he asked us to share our faith tradition and how we were involved within it. And I began preparing myself for the ridicule I would get. When it was my turn to speak, I simply said, my name's Umer and I'm Muslim. And I put my head down. I have participated in several Islamic competitions, have completed the Quran and I'm, and I'm now reading a second time. After I said this with my head down, the first thing I heard from a classmate was, wow. And that was followed very quickly by a no way, and that's amazing. And after that, I continued to keep my head down, not because I didn't believe what was being said to me, but because I was trying to prevent the tears welling up in my eyes from trickling down my face. And I am proud to say that as a brave, I have never turned back after that. True change is accomplished because each and every one of us exchanges the promise of a revolution. And my fellow students and teachers, you have revolutionized me. It was because of the bonds that I formed with my classmates and the bonds that we continue to share today that I was given a great gift. I was granted the privilege of starting the Muslim Student Union here at Burbuff. And it's truly because of the kindness and acceptance that you have all shown me. Because of this, not only was I propelled into more curiosity about my own faith, but I began to become curious about the Catholic faith tradition as well. And the more I learned about the Catholic faith, the more I just discovered about my own faith. And I can tell you that I am the proudest man alive, standing up here, being able to say that I am a Muslim boy who has the privilege of learning about the Catholic faith. But just as importantly as the faith aspect is, I began to cultivate the bonds I made with everyone. And the bonds that I share with each and every one of you is just as precious to me as life itself. The truth is, there will be plenty of people in the world, outside, who try to drag us down. But that's the great thing about us here at Burbuff, is that the bonds that we have with one another will propel us into a lifetime 
of being men and women for others. Now, as I wrap up, I want to quickly read to you a verse from the chapter of the Quran. It reads, shamsi wa duhaha, wal qamari idha talaha, wal nahar idha jallaha, wal layl idha yakhsha, wal samai wa ma banaha, wal ardi wa ma tuhaha, wa nafsi wa ma sawaha, fa alhamaha fujuraha wa taqwaha, qad aflaha man tazakka wa qad qab min dhasa. By the sun and its brightness, by the moon as it follows it, by the heaven and him who built it, by the earth and he who spread it, by the soul and he who perfected it and inspired it with all the knowledge of what is wrong for it and what is right for it. Indeed, successful will be the one who attempts and purifies it. And indeed, unsuccessful will be the one who corrupts it. My fellow Burba family, whenever I see one of you, I see the promise of a world that shines with light. So I leave you with these last few words. Despite my hesitations, despite all of my worries and regrets I think I've had up until now, with the few words you have given me, you have all vanquished my bewilderment and shown me what the true power of bonds can hold. Thank you, my Burba family, for showing me that world. Thank you. 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 Thank you.